so good. This beat. Good day, my name is Ivan Nispel and I'm going to be bringing some tank gameplay on Orbital for the BF 2042 beta. I am absolutely thrilled that not only did I get to have early access with other content creators, but now we're actually in the official early stages of the beta now. So hopefully you've already seen some of my videos already. I highly recommend that you uh, go back and have a look if this is your know, first time oh, seeing my mate. videos, as well as to like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button because there's plenty of videos from the past I would say are definitely good content for you and I'm definitely working forward for the future for the game release and beyond to help you guys become better gamers in regards to vehicle combat as well as in overall your skill set for Battlefield as well so let's really get into the nitty gritty here so this is on the uh, Russian side of the map. I find that there has a bit of a favoritism of having the high ground which helps you a lot control the scenarios. But if you've already noticed and have personal experience in the beta now, that the tanks work very similar to Battlefield 5. So you have to be very careful with your crosshair placement because if you do not place your crosshead where you want or expect where the enemy comes from, you're going to get punished a lot and suffer but with every time you have a failure that's an opportunity for you to learn from your experiences so never be afraid first of all as my first lesson for you never be afraid to make mistakes because when you make mistakes that's where you will learn the most from so hopefully I'll be able to give you some skills in regards to looking back at your own footage so that you can actually make some of these decisions yourself of what you did well what you could have done better and what to work on from there so as you can see here i'm working with my team and positioning myself a lot of people think tanks are these big giant juggernaut things that can just roam the map and just control everything a tank is technically one player in the vehicle if he is alone and you're versing five enemies six enemies seven you oh God, will lose i don't care how god's gift you are to earth at tanking it's just not gonna happen it's simple math and especially when they know how to coordinate and work together because what they will good infantry players will do they will bait you so you're facing one direction while their plan to kill you is coming from another direction which normally comes from the side or behind so that's one of my first tips to you guys never expose your back of your tank to you especially in this game because the way they've decided to balance it is simply allow the turret not to be able to aim further down from behind so it has less gun depression and what I mean by gun depression it can't aim as far down to the ground allowing for people when they get close to you to get up behind you with no fear of being shot and attacked also if you're fighting you're taking a lot of damage there is no shame in retreating because a tank is a valuable asset to the team. As long as you can stay up and position yourself accordingly and take on the enemy, 
then you will be putting yourself in helping the team's goal of controlling flags, pushing flags, or just overall shutting down their vehicles as well. So, how would you position yourself in this game? Well, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. So the first idea that you really want to work on is what flags do you already own? What flags do the enemy own? And where is the rest of your team and theirs comparison into where you are? So you want to position yourself in a way that makes it really hard for them to push your flags that you already capture whilst also allowing for your team to push up onto their objectives and putting more pressure on them because how this game works is the more flag assets you hold the more ticket bleed will go and cause their tickets to go down now in this game compared to previous conquest titles they will have to split up zones so each zone has a set amount of key objectives you have in it before you can actually own the, the zone and start turning the ticket count in your favor there are some zones which only have one flag for example both the give me flags what a give me flag is just to briefly cover that it's the flag closest to your uncap otherwise known in this game the HQ so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm pushing a flag and I'm putting myself between what I think the spawn points are now what a spawn point is is simply where a pre-programmed position okay, where players so will spawn in around the flag that they choose on the deploy screen if you can block them when your team's on the cap circle from getting on the flag you're doing yourself a very big value to the team because every player that's spawned in near the objective they're trying to defend their teammates and squad mates can spawn off them and get on the objective and make it a risk for you to losing capturing that flag or killing you and, or killing your teammates and costing the team more tickets because every kill does matter at the end of the day when you have lots of really good players playing together some games get down to like in the one digits and those are some of the best games you can see here I managed to get some very lucky side shots on the tank and I take him out now how you want to engage your army is unfortunately the minimap is not working properly in this game when they do allow that what you want to try and do is constantly keep an eye out on where their tanks are so you can get the first shot on them Normally, tank 1v1 fights are determined by simply who gets the first shot. And you want to be the first to get the first shot on the enemy vehicle. Because whoever does that generally normally will win, unless they have assistance from their own teammates. Anyway, you can see I'm positioning myself once again, taking advantage of where their spawn points are, and making it really hard for them to come and take the flag back off us again. So that's how you want to position yourself. The next thing you want to do as your basic skills for tanking is pathing. Pathing is basically how you move yourself across the map to cause maximum damage as well as efficiently get from one flag to the other. When you do this, you'll have a greater impact for your team and be able to help out way more. So you can see here, I'm trying to take out this R. Helu or Halo, I can't remember exactly. I think it's the off spray it's called. And you can see it's pretty uh, buggy at the moment at this game. And let's get this. Nice. So, one thing you want to do is also to expand your skill set in this game is understand the velocity and travel time of your L LMG as well as the tank shell in this game. And once you've mastered that, you're going to be taking shots and not missing because the last thing you want to do in this game is choke. Especially when in this game, where you position your turret means even more because if you miss your first shot, you're going to have to wait before you take the next shot or shoot your LMG. And with the movement in this game, it can be quite difficult to track the enemy given how the turret works in this game. But if you have work on your aim, do some, you know, some training on the side, you can get around this. 
And also, if you position yourself a little bit further away from the enemy, your turret won't be as hard to track them up as if they were in close range to you, given the turret and acceleration and how it works in this game. You can see me making some horrible shots on this, just forgive me. Still trying to figure out how this tank exactly works. Anyway, some other things you want to consider yourself, always have an escape plan. And what I mean by an escape plan means, if you know how to path yourself across the map and how to get to one objective to the other effectively while shutting down the enemy teams, destroying their rotations while helping your own, what happens for the unforeseen plan? The enemy having a plan against you, preparing for you so that you are now, the tr now are trapped. Well, if you think ahead of, well, if this happens, I'm going to do this instead. So, for example, say if in front of me now there was two or three tanks, what am I going to do to get away from them? I know behind me there's actually, in the missile silo it is, there's a little underground area which I can quickly retreat and hide into there. And if they're not paying attention enough, I might be able to sneak up on them as they pass by and then kill them. So that's what I mean having an escape route and a backup plan. If you always plan for the worst scenario ahead of what's going on, you're going to survive better. Also some things you want to also learn as well is seat switching. So simply if the guys are getting close to you and you're having a bit of trouble tracking them or they're behind you and your turret can't aim down low enough, what you want to try and do if you're soloing, unless you have a squad mate or buddy, is seat switch where you switch to the gunner seat and you can shoot at the enemy that at a lower depression as well as also if they have the higher ground as you just saw right there I was able to get a shot on them earlier because the turret for the machine gun sits above my turret so I can actually see him even better before he even gets to see the chassis of my tank and shoot a rocket off now what you always want to do as well is keep an eye on what flags the enemy holds. I'm pretty sure I've already talked about this at the start as well, which I'll, which I'll go on and move on to other things now. So you want to make sure also your uh, yeah. ammo count. No, How many no. shells do you have in reserve? You is your LMG overheated? Is your repair tool overheated? And the yeah, one reason I'll bring up the repair tool because at this point in time there's yeah, actually a cooldown on the repair tool which doesn't reset when you get inside of the vehicle. So if you have the chance to just sit outside of your vehicle for a little bit longer so you can cool, let the cooldown go down so that when you have to get in and out and do a quick repair to keep your vehicle up it's not you're going to be in, in a situation where it's a little bit less sticky and hairy speaking of getting out into repair another tip is make sure when you do get out to repair your tank you always back up enough so that they can't kill you while you're out trying to repair your vehicle now one of the things that um i would always highly recommend is to go down with your tank. If you don't think it's safe enough to get outside of your tank, repair it and get back in without being shot, take the gentleman's way out. Don't give them the tank. The last thing you want to do is allow them to have both your team's tanks so that your team has no vehicles whatsoever. What you want to do is just go down with the ship. If you do that, that means at least then the tank will respawn and your team will get it back and put it into action under ex uh, expendable time limit for what the respawn is for it. I haven't measured exactly what the um, spawn retime on it is, but I do like how they've implemented it so that people can't just always spam the vehicle and only one person has it. So it rewards people that, you know, if you make a mistake, you give someone else a chance to use the tank as well. As a well, having a cooldown time so that the vehicles are not up and always 24-7. But they seem to have balanced it out on this map, having a long travel distance time for you to get in into the action from your headquarters. Anyway, I feel like I've talked a lot here and there's probably enough information and tips and tricks for you to take in now. So I'm going to just let the raw footage play in the background. Please let me know if you'd rather hear me talking about tips, tricks and advice and things that I think of the uh, beta so far. Or if you would like me to just do more raw game footage. Let me know in the comments below. Please, once again, leave us a uh, like, a comment subscribe because I'm definitely putting out more content 
all the way to the game release and beyond. Did you guys have that server lag really briefly? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I thought it was my game and then I saw like a player had this like he was just stopped, obviously like confused why I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, like top sea hill lots. On you guys, but in the tunnel as well. Yeah, that's, oh, you're on the tunnel, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on you with Gunner. Like, I came around the corner here, there was 10 of them. The fuck, I'm looking. I'll try and help you. I think I killed them all, or they like freaked the fuck out and left. Or maybe. But here we go, got them. I'm overheated. You're the same. Dead. Oh, Getting bad. I, I got so disoriented. Oh, my God. It's up on the edge there as well. Jesus. I found that peeking into a tank. I'll make it work. One on the right. Make sure they're not coming behind. Oh my god. The the road spawns. Yeah, spawns there are so weird. If you stand still for two seconds, I can heal you. Go. Shady's movement's good because I can't even hit my fucking pistol on to heal him. On top of the tower as well. Oh yeah. Coming up. Oh, you see. Nice. Oh, up, up, oh, up on the hill, up on the hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down, go. Thank you. Oh. Robo dog. Robo dog. Got him, I think. Holy crap, he's so tanky. Where do you get your spawn? Man, I couldn't win my one against that guy. Oh, choppers, fuck off. Goodbye, chopper. What is that? Tank. Shit. Oh, the infantry's on my right. Tank is there, uh, you can't keep up with. Move. They're all behind the rocks, bro. I'll try to spot them all. Oh, fuck. That has been fucked. Recoil this from the. Do I hold the res? There's someone shooting uh, uh, Alright, easy, easy. Oh, you said you KD saved me? We Please. Holy crap, really 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 89 for zero. Man, there's a lot of kills for our squad.